This is Suzanne Wagner, and um, I recently put up a, a photo of the Temple of the Moon, which is a particular place that is off to one side of Machu Picchu. And I put in the caption, I almost died in this place. <laughs> and so somebody said, I want to hear the story. And I thought, okay, I'll do a video on this particular spiritual journey story. Um, so many years ago, I used to take people to Peru and I would uh, take them every single year. And it was really fun. I, I love everything about Peru. Um, when I get there, I feel like a kid in a candy store. I get very excited to be there and very happy to be there. And um, I'm sure I've had lots of really positive, joyous lifetimes in Peru. And it's one of my very happy places um, in the world when I go. And um, so this particular trip, um, I my sister had gone on this trip. And my sister is a pediatrician. And she said, um, I want, uh, where have you not been? Where have you not been on Machu Picchu? And I said, well, I haven't been to the Temple of the Moon. And um, so she said, well, let's go to the Temple of the Moon. I said, okay. And so... My sister and I are very good hikers. We're really good outdoors. We have trekked in lots of crazy places. And so we are not unprepared. So I'll just say it like that. We're usually very prepared and we're usually in pretty good shape. And so we're we're tough. And so this particular trip, I had a, a liter and a half of Gucanade and it was supposedly going to be like, you know, maybe, you know, two or three miles to the place. It, it wasn't it wasn't that far. I mean, it didn't seem like it was going to be that far. Um, and so I had a, a liter and a half of water. I had gucanate in it, which is the electrolytes, you know, so that you can maintain and hold on to it because it's got salt in it and stuff. My sister had the same thing. We had tuna, cans of tuna. We had peanut butter and crackers and, you know, we had food. We were, we were ready to go for the day and just make this a fun little adventure. Um, so we take off. And so, you know, here's the path, the, the trail to Huanapichu, which is that peak you always see in the background of Machu Picchu. Um, and this trail kind of goes off to the side and then goes down like this. And um, so we start going on this trail and all of a sudden we realize that in the cliff face there are these uh, rock formations that are not carved. These are natural rock formations and they look like serpents and condors and I suddenly get this very bad feeling. And I said to my sister, I said, oh shit, I think we're going into the underworld. We're getting a whole bunch of images of the underworld. And I went, oh, temple of the moon. We're probably going into a place of death. You know, we're probably going into an embalming place or something like this. And she goes, wow, that's cool. And I said, well, the most beautiful rock formations, um, you know, like how they fitted the rocks together in Machu Picchu or at the temple of the moon. And it sounded cool, you know, like we were going to go down and see this thing. So I also have to say that my sister and I are always very, very respectful of sacred places. So we're not like the rude tourist, you know, we're super quiet and honoring and respectful and say prayers and stuff like that. So anyway, we start going down, <laughs> we start going down for a bit and all of a sudden we have to go up this cliff face. And I mean like a cliff face and they are working on the cliff um, and there are no handholds. And so you're literally, it's so steep. You're, you're crawling up this cliff face and there's these steps that are, are cut into the cliff face. And so, you know, it's like, you know, 800 feet straight down, you know, I mean, it's precarious and we can see that they're working on the, the trail to make it more secure and stable. And at the top of this spot, there's a, a a water barrel that is full of rainwater and I noticed it and it's funny how your guides make you notice something and I noticed it and I also noticed that it was full of mosquito larva <laughs> and that the barrel was um rusting right so I knew that this was the water for the workers that were working up there but it wasn't water that I was going to drink you know I mean it's like it was full of mosquito larva so it was like yeah no right so anyway from that high point we went down and we went down, 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 down. And the steps were so deep. Some of the, most of the steps were the depth of between your, um, uh, your foot to your knee, which going down is a heavy step, but going up 
was going to be hard and and my sister and i instantly both realized what we were up against and and we were like uh you know do we really want to do this and it's a boiling hot day and um, the sun is glaring and we're on the hot side of the mountain and you know sometimes in the afternoon the clouds come in and i thought well you know maybe the clouds will come in because you get the rainbows that are always so beautiful on machu picchu and i thought well maybe you know it's just going to cool off and the clouds the storm clouds will come in so we keep going down <clears throat> and we get to this beautiful temple of the moon and the stonework is amazing and we go into one of the sanctuaries of the buildings and we notice there's this gigantic like this big bug it was like a bug this big and you know it had spindly legs and everything and and we instantly knew that this was the guardian of the temple and we instantly went into respect mode you could feel that there was a shaman there that was coming through the bug and and we said we are not going to harm anything we're not going to hurt anything we are here in absolute honor and respect and um then we noticed that in the niches there were these um meteorites and i mean they're high up and so they're meteorites and and when you go to touch them like they're so heavy you like you can't move them at all like i don't even know how anybody got them there like you can't even they don't rock you they don't move they don't do anything and and there's an area close by where you can see that a meteor like took out the top of a mountain and pelted down and you could tell that these were the meteorites that they had taken out of the ground which might be one of the reasons that machu picchu is in the location that it's in but we had seen that the day before <laughs> and somehow they had walked these meteorites that are too heavy to go on the back of a llama and they had somehow walked them in and these things were really heavy i mean they must have weighed a thousand pounds each they were remarkable right so we were noticing that and we were noticing that suddenly the bug was gone you know and so we went out and we suddenly uh reach up into this high point and we and we pull out these machetes which were probably from the workers they were clearing the grass you know to to create a space uh, so you could walk into the temple but it was still sort of eerie that there was a machete machetes and um the bug was gone and you know there was these sacred rocks and you know then we noticed that there are these places that are like embalming um places um where they have areas so that the liquid from the body can actually be drained away into the ground <laughs> and so my sister and i probably made the poor mistake there was no place to sit and so we sat on one of these uh tables because there was there was about the uh, the size of a big chair right and so we sat there and we ate our tuna fish and drank the juice and everything like this and and then we left and we you know left little prayers and little amulets of of thanking and little flowers that we had brought in. I mean, we had done everything correctly, right? And so we left and as we started leaving and we're climbing out and we're climbing like, you know, these huge steps and all of a sudden we can tell that we're getting super dehydrated and we suddenly realized that we'd been very careful that we were only using you know half of our water going down and then we were going to use half coming out well we actually probably shouldn't have had any coming down and then we were probably should have kept as much as we could coming out but we didn't know that at the time and it was boiling hot and the sun was out and there were no clouds and we can feel ourselves getting dehydrated to the point that um our clothes start falling off of us and you know we're you're you are leaching so much water from your blood to circulate and cool off your skin that your blood starts to thicken and then your heart starts to beat really hard like boom 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 and then it starts to slow way down because the blood is thick it's like boom 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 and it's actually quite an eerie feeling when you suddenly realize that the clothes that we're fitting this morning are literally falling off of your body because you're losing that much liquid in your body and um so we were trying to make jokes right so my sister and i are notorious jokesters in situations like this that we've been in and she says you know we're kind of in trouble here you know she says i think we're in trouble and i said yeah i think we're in trouble too and she goes well she said i could i could 
keep going. I'm in better shape than you. Um, and she says, I'll, I'll lay across the, the trail, uh, the, the Tijuana Pichu. And she says, I'll lay across the trail and wave money and say, por favor, mi hermana enferma, por favor, agua, right? You know, kind of thing. And um, so, but I heard the guides in my head say that if you stop and you sit and you don't, and you don't move, you're not going to not move and then you're going to die. And it was really clear, like, don't stop. So I keep walking and she's walking and she's bad. I'm bad. I'm worse than her for some reason. And um, we keep walking and then I know this sounds horrible to say on video, but I got massive diarrhea, which is actually a sign that you have heat stroke. So when your body starts having diarrhea, um, it thinks you're being poisoned. Um, and so then it tries to get rid of whatever is poisoning you because you're getting kind of lightheaded and you're getting kind of unstable in your walking. And so then my sister got super alarmed because she said, that's a really bad sign. I'm a pediatrician. <laughs> that's a really bad sign. Like you are in full on heat stroke. And I said, I know I, I can feel it. I said, I've never had my heart beat so heavy and my clothes are falling off of me. And so <laughs> I finally just said, screw the top. Um, so I took off my clothes and um, I stuffed them in my pack and I thought I'm my top is naked, but I'm so hot that I said, you know, if somebody comes on the trail and I'm naked, naked, I'm just going to wave at them. You know, <laughs> I'm just going to, I don't care. I mean, I just had to get the clothes off of my body. And so, um, so then she does the same thing. So here we are, we're walking with no tops on with backpacks, trying to get up this hill in the boiling heat and we can hear water. We can hear creeks, we can hear water and we can't find it. It was like it was haunting us. Like we, you could hear it, like it was so close, but you could not find it. And the brush was so thick that you couldn't without a machete again, you know, which we probably should have picked up the machetes, but without a machete, we couldn't have um, gotten into where the water was. So, and then do you want to drink the water? Another big question, right? So um, all I can think of is I just want to get to the top, which is where that barrel of water was. And I wanted to just get in the barrel of water. And um, so my sister, you know, literally is hanging on to my pants because I'm so unsteady that she thinks that I could fall off the cliff, right, as we're climbing this cliff. And I felt that unsteady. It's like I, you know, it was that funny thing of where you know you're not in a good state, but you know if you stop, you're going to be in a worse state because you can't afford to keep dehydrating at this rate. And um, so we finally get to the barrel of water, and I just literally go headfirst into the barrel of water. I just, and I sat in the barrel of water and I cooled off my core body temperature. I wasn't going to drink the water, but I was going to sit in the water and cool off my core temperature. And, and that actually worked so that literally all my organs cooled off and everything like that. And, and my body temperature started to even out. And I came out of that feeling of heat stroke. And um, then I told my sister to get in the barrel and she was like, "Uh, -uh I am not getting in that barrel. There's no way. And I, I said, well, you know, you're in bad shape too. And she goes, no, but I'm not in as bad a shape as you. And so she said, give me your pack. And I said, I don't want you carrying my pack in your pack. And she goes, well, there's almost nothing in these packs, which was true. And she gave me her last swallow of water. And she said to me, giving it to me, she says, never think I don't love you. I'm giving you the last bit of my water. <laughs> and I was like, thank you. Right. And um, so then we started walking and I'm at that point feeling much, much better because my core temperature is off. But now we have to go down this cliff and my sister is actually in heat stroke. So now she's in heat stroke. And, and, and I said, Mary Kay, let me take your, let me take the packs. I'm actually better. And she goes, no. And I said, no, really, let me take the packs. And she goes, you know how you're in such a bad state that if you change anything, you're actually going to collapse. And I said, yeah. And she said, that's where I'm at. If you take any weight off of me right now, I think I'm going to collapse. And I was like, okay, I understand that. I totally get that. And so then we're going down this cliff face and she's weaving and I'm like, 
you know, like this, trying to keep a hold of her. And then we get to the main trail again, and there is this um, Israeli family of four that's coming down from Juana Pichu, but they all literally have empty water bottles in their hand. And so we knew they had no water. And so we're just like, okay, we're going to just keep going. We're just going to keep going. And we get to the place where they have water at Machu Picchu. They're selling water and all my clients come running up to me and they're like super excited. They want to share their day. And I was like, we almost died on the trail. We're in heat stroke. We need like four bottles, gigantic bottles of water now. And we need like four Coca-Colas because we need sugar right now. And I said, if you want to do anything, get the pack off my sister, you know. And so they go running and, and doing all this stuff and getting us water and all this kind of stuff. And we drank four bottles, of liter bottles of water, and we drank four Coca-Colas each. And we started to feel like we were coming back to sanity. And then we were supposed to go stay and be with the shaman for a ceremony. And I and my sister both said, we've got to go back to the hotel where we, we literally almost died. You know, we, we should, we're probably in heat stroke and we shouldn't even be out. We should be laying down. And so in an air conditioned area, so we take the bus down. And then as we're going through the area where the shop, the shopkeepers are, um, we, suddenly notice that the shopkeepers aren't bothering us. You know how they try and, oh, come over here, you know, buy t-shirts, whatever. And um, they aren't even bothering us. And we're kind of shocked that they're not even bothering us. And then we realize they're kind of looking at us like this, you know, like this. And we're thinking, why are they looking at us like that? And then we suddenly realize that we're moaning. So every step we take, we're talking to ourselves. We're literally like, okay. One more step. Okay. The hotel is right there. Like, like we were literally so out of it. We thought we were fairly good, but we were so out of it that we were literally talking to ourselves and moaning with every single step. And the shopkeepers are like, whoa, like this. So we get back to the hotel. We order more water, more Coca-Colas, more Fanta, more of, you know, just as much liquid as we could. We stood in the shower um, cold water on us for as long as we, I can't even remember how long we stood there. Um, and I must have drank nine liters of water for sure. And probably 16 Coca-Colas. I mean, that shows you how really dehydrated we were. And I literally, my sister literally looked at me and she said, you actually should be in the hospital. <laughs> But we were in the middle of Machu Picchu. There is no hospital remotely close. And I literally spent the next three days in bed. I mean, I I was so out of it. Um, she thought I was in renal failure. And it was only because we were pushing so much liquid in me um, that day. And then the next day and the following day that um, I, I think I managed to survive. So needless to say... If you ever go to the Temple of the Moon in Machu Picchu, know that it's the embalming place. And I realized later that literally we were getting embalmed, like liquid was pouring out of us just like we were a dead body on that slab. And don't ever sit on an embalming slab, FYI. Um, and realize that if you suddenly see machetes, you might be needing them <laughs> for something later. Um, yeah, it was interesting. So that's my Temple of the Moon story. And the story continues from there because then the next uh, three days later, we got, my sister and I both got struck by lightning, um, in, on Lake Titicaca at, in Copacabana at the hotel in Copacabana and it blew the roof off the the hotel. Yeah, seriously. It was one of those trips that the the group said, "Oh yeah, go to Suzanne, go to Peru with Suzanne, have a death experience." <laughs> so, needless to say, it was entertaining, but be warned. I think they now have a sign on the trail to the much to Temple of the Moon of how, what a severe trail it is and that, you know, it's like a class whatever hike it's a very severe hike so they now have a warning on the trail 
I never, I never complained, but obviously somebody almost died. So there you go. Okay. Thanks everybody. Talk to you later.